Hello, everybody. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a professor at Oklahoma State University. And I'm going to try to answer today a question that I get asked a lot. People always ask me, I said, Tyler, why is Roman concrete more durable than modern concrete? And I'm not really sure it is, but we'll talk about it today. I'm also going to give you some insights on how to be successful in a bar fight. Yeah, I know. Kids, stop watching right now. So why is Roman concrete more durable than modern concrete? That's a question I get a lot. And it's true that there are definitely Roman structures that are really old. I mean, there's some that are over 2,300 years old, and they're still in service today. And they're so cool. Why don't we look at them? The Romans were amazing engineers. For example, they could build aqueducts out of concrete. They would carry water miles from huge distances into their cities, right? They'd also build massive stadiums. This is the Colosseum. They'd gather people in and they'd watch battles between humans and animals, between other humans, even sea battles inside of this sucker. Pretty amazing, right? They also built their um, temples. This is the Pantheon, okay? Where they would go and worship their gods. And then also the baths of Karkala. They built these big, huge baths where people would come together and hang out and chill and bathe each other, I guess. Not quite sure. I wasn't ever there. Pretty awesome. So, yeah, there's a lot of structures that were built a long time ago by the Romans that are still around today, but there's a lot of Roman structures that are not in service today, that are not around at all, that were destroyed, that didn't make it. And the ones that still exist are all in mild environments. They don't see freezing and thawing environments at all. They have amazing weather. They don't really see a lot of rain. They don't, they don't put de-icing salts put on them. They don't have any reinforcing steel inside of them. That's a big deal. That's a really, really big deal because a lot of times the thing that causes actual durability problems is the steel corroding. Not always, but sometimes. My point is, these were great environments to make structures that have still made it. So we could make our structures long-lasting if we did this as well. But regardless of any of this, because we still sometimes have to build in these extreme environments, and we, we use steel inside of our modern concrete. It's a pretty good idea because concrete's not very strong in, um, um, in tension, so it cracks. The Roman construction techniques and materials, though, um, created certain situations that could help promote the life of their concrete. And these ideas are helpful for us to compare to our modern construction practices. It's just good to think about how do people do things in the past versus how we do them now, and does it make sense? Are we doing things the right way? Recall that the Roman cements were probably belite based. I talked about that in a previous video. and I'll, I'll make a link to it so you can watch it if you want. But that just means that they, these binders took months, months to gain strength. This means that these reactions were really slow. I mean, sometimes say, some people think it took over a year for them to open these structures after casting the concrete. But there's a lot of benefits to this. The physical properties were allowed to develop over time. And these concretes were not put in service right away. They weren't loaded right away. They were allowed to slowly gain their strength over time. And this is very different than our modern construction methods. Today, time is money. We gotta move, we gotta get things open. The quicker we can get people on a road, the quicker they can get home, or they can get to work, we can get goods there. The quicker we can get a building open, people can start living there, 
They can start charging rent. Okay. There's a lot of benefits to getting things open more rapidly, but there's trade-offs. There's always trade-offs in life. And we've decided as a society to make that trade-off with our modern concretes. We've tried to make them gain strength fast. We try to open them as quickly as we can. Do we always have to do that though? Would there be some structures we might take it easy on? And I'll talk about coming up that in a way there's things we can do to make our modern cements more like Roman cements. It's very widely practiced. It's in a future video. Got to hold on though. Here's some more lessons. Cements that are more reactive gain strength and stiffness much more rapidly than slower reacting cements. What do I mean by that? Well, I've plotted time here on the x-axis and I've plotted stiffness or modulus. This is like how squishy something is, right? <clears throat> something like concrete is pretty stiff. Something like steel is even stiffer and something like Play-Doh is not very stiff at all. And what this is showing here is that our modern cements follow this top line. They're alite based. That's our modern cements. They gain strength very, very, very quickly. Days. They gain stiffness. I, sh I show here after two months, I say that they're pretty much done gaining stiffness and they're flat. But if we look at B-Lite based cements, these are the ancient cements. It took them a year or so to gain stiffness. Lower modulus materials, things that are more squishy, they allow more strain to occur before they tear or fracture. They allow more deformation, things that happen with a lower modulus before they tear. So another way to show this mathematically, if you like math, I do, if you like math, is I'm showing stress here and I'm showing strain down here. And if something has a higher modulus, it's up here. This would maybe be our modulus of our modern cements. And if something has a lower modulus, that would be down here. That would be the modulus of the ancient cements. And so for a given amount of strain, this is for a given amount of stretch, that you're actually going to produce way more stress in our modern cements than we will our ancient cements. So higher modulus for a given amount of strain means higher stress. So lower modulus is going to mean less cracking. Lower amount of cracking is good because cracks are like super highways for outside chemicals to get into our concrete or water to cause freeze-thaw damage. So reducing cracks is a very good thing. And I've shown you here with the, the modulus of modern versus the modulus of ancient, but anything we can do to reduce the modulus of our concrete is going to help us produce less cracks. The other thing that I'm not talking about today, something called creep. Creep is the amount of strain that happens under a given amount of stress. If I can give something a longer amount of time with a certain amount of stress, it can creep out before it causes damage to my structure. This is really beneficial and not well understood. This means that some of these stresses that I think are there aren't really there. They leave. And anything I can do to lower this modulus, delay these stresses being placed in my structure, that's a good thing. It's going to mean less cracks. So I know you got a question out there. I know you're saying, so how is this like a bar fight? I've been trying to tell you about this difference in modulus and how it means different performance of our materials. And I told you, something with a lower modulus, it means it's harder to crack. It means it's harder to hurt. And that's where the bar fight comes in. If you ever see two people fighting, 
in a bar and they've been drinking. Let's say they've been drinking too much. The drunker one gets, the more kind of like loosey-goosey they get. Oh, yeah, they go with the flow. And it's hard to hurt them. They don't tense up. You can smack them. And they, they're just, they're like hitting water. They just they can't be hurt. So the person that's more drunk in the bar fight, not so drunk that they can't hit each other, but they're not going to sustain as much damage as the person that's less drunk. So I know that's kind of crazy, but uh, there's a secret you can you maybe use at one point to help yourself on a bar fight. Now, if you're ever fighting somebody, though, that's more drunk than you, what you can do is you can get them up next to something. Like have somebody hold them or get them up next to a wall. See, because then they can't be all loosey-goosey. And when you hit them, they're up against that wall. It's going to get them. So I know that's a little uh, crazy and out there. Maybe it'll help you remember. Lower modulus materials, like people that are drunk, are harder to hurt than higher modulus materials. Thanks.